Houston, we have a problem. Come in, Houston, we have a problem. Hello, this is Chew Dog Charts, and today we're going to talk about terminal velocity. Now, a stock market has a typical cycle. At the very bottom is desperation and fear, and at the top of the cycle is euphoria and greed. And as we approach the top of the cycle, we reach what I call terminal velocity. Others call it a blow-off stage. Now, approaching the top of the cycle, when in terminal velocity, in my opinion, that is the point of maximum risk. So let's take a look at terminal velocity. As you can see here in this characterization of a stock market cycle, we start out with optimism, move through excitement, on to thrill, and then to euphoria at the top of the cycle. And then on the way down, we go through anxiety, denial, fear, depression, panic, capitulation, despondence. Then at the bottom, and we move through depression, and then comes hope, relief, and optimism. Today, I believe we've moved through excitement into thrill and on our way to euphoria. So let's take a look at the charts that I'm talking about. This here is the Dow Jones Industrial Average from 1991 to 2001, a period of 10 years. And simply looking at the chart, you can visualize the different stages of the cycle as we move on up from hope to relief to optimism to excitement to thrill and euphoria. And I look at this chart and to me we've got optimism and excitement here moving on to thrill and then the last stage is the euphoric stage. Back here from 1991 to early 1997 you see that the rise was a 16% annualized pace. During this period here, say in early 97 to late 1998, it increased to 27% annualized pace. And then in the last stage, a period of about 1.4 years long, we were up 38% on the annualized pace. Now, we moved sideways here, but from the peak to the bottom, in the crash of 2000, the dot-com boom, we were down 38% over the next 2.7 years. This chart here is the Dow Jones Industrial Average from 2003 to 2008, a period of about five years. And although this chart is not as symmetrical as the previous chart, you can still see the various stages. From early 2003 into, say, mid-2006, the rise was at a 15% annualized pace. In the second stage here, from mid-2006 into early 2007, the rise increased to 21%. And then in the last stage, from early 2007 into late 2007, the pace increased further to 31% for a period of about seven months. And from the peak to the bottom through the Great Recession, the crash was down 54% over the next 1.4 years. And this chart here, which is a Dow Jones Industrial Average from 2009 until Thursday, November 30th, a period of about nine years, you again can visualize the different stages of the cycle. And in this first portion here, from early 2009 to, say, mid-2015, the Dow increased at a 19% annualized pace. This period here, from mid-2015 until early 2017, the rise increased to 22% annualized pace. And then in the last stage here, we're about seven and a half months so far, and the increase is at a pace of 33% annualized. So as it indicates here, it's time to be cautious. From the first two charts, we know what happened. We don't know what's going to happen now, 
but it's just simply time to step back and be careful. Now, I have one more chart for you. All right, this last chart here shows the two year and the 10 year or the separation or the spread between the short term rates of the two year and the 10 year going back to 1990 and up to uh, 2018. And if you go back into periods of time here, such as the year 2000, if you can see my cursor, once the spread goes below zero, that's when difficulties occur, such as the dot com crash at this period here. Back in, say, early 2006, the spread went below zero. However, the debt crisis didn't occur for quite some time later. However, that was a pretty good leading indicator. And here we are. Now we're at 0.59 on our way down. Not at zero yet, so we still have some time, potentially. And this trend line here, the red trend line, is simply uh, based on these the bottoms of the spread from the last two previous occurrences. Now, to show you that this doesn't always work, we go back into period times of A and B. A was in early 1990 and B was in mid-1998, when in both times the spread went below zero, but we did not have any significant difficulties in the market in these occasions. So it just goes to show you that one indicator is not always going to give you the heads up on a crash. It's just simply another point of reference to take a look at and given what's happened these last two previous times we're going to pay attention to this spread as it declines and watch and see what happens to the market. So for now that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.